Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2017 Infinity QX60 and today we're going to show you how to install our version 2 of our Apple CarPlay in an Android Auto Kit. As you can see it's already installed in our car and it's paired to iPhone wirelessly. Now with the version 2 you can also pair it to your Android phone wirelessly. You can uh, still control it through the touch screen or the original knob right here. With the version 2 there is less wiring to do. You now don't need to take the center console apart in order to connect for sound. The sound is connected directly at the back of the head unit. Uh, with the version 2 you also don't need to wire the extra microphone. The system will use your original microphone for phone calls and voice commands. And uh, with our system, the original system will still work the same way. You can switch back to the Infinity. Uh, you can also use your original rear view camera. If you put your car into reverse, this image will go away and you'll see all your cameras as before, so nothing will be disabled. And now we're going to show you how to install it in this particular car. So the tools that you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, this is our hook tool, and this is a panel removal tool, and of course you're going to need our version 2 of the kit. We're going to first start by removing this rubber piece right here, and to do that you kind of lift it, then just pull it out. Then next there is another trim piece and to remove it you can use our tool to get behind it and use it as a hook to grab on it and it comes out and it's going to have a connection here which you can press on the clip. Next again we're going to be using our fingers and this piece has to come out and you just have to pull it towards yourself. Over here underneath you're going to see there's two bolts, they're both Phillips. And we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver in order to unscrew them. Now we can remove the silver portion and it just unclips because we removed the two bolts. And here's a connector which you just have to press the clip in order to disconnect. Here again you're going to see two Phillips, there's one right there, you have to move this cable down in order to see it, and there's one over here. And we're going to again just get our screwdriver in and remove them. Now we can grab this whole HVAC panel and unclip it, and behind it there's one connection, so you press the clip disconnected. Now we need to remove these vents and in order to do that there's a bolt right there in the middle which you have to unscrew. Now you can grab on the vents and start pulling them out. It also helps to use the panel removal tool on top here. So once you remove the vents you can check. As you can see one of them came out from its clip so you can just clip it back in. This one never came out so it's good, you can just leave it like that. So once everything has been removed you're going to see that there's four bolts here. So the two top ones hold the screen in. We have to remove all of them and then these two hold the head unit and then there's two more at the bottom which also hold the head unit in place. So we're going to go ahead and remove all six of them. Now we can grab our screen, we're going to tilt it and remove it, and we're going to tilt it this way, and you're going to disconnect all the connections that are going into this screen. So there's two white ones on top, and then these connections it helps to use a flathead screwdriver. You just press on the top clip and remove them, and then this one you have to click and disconnect. Now we're going to take this screen and we're going to show you what we're going to ins install inside of it and it's going to be our circuit board. So now we're going to show you what you're going to in get inside your kit. So there's two components. This is the component that will go inside your original screen. So you have this circuit board. There's three uh, plastic rivets to hold it in place. You have these uh, flat cables and this another cable to do the video signal. Over here, this all gets mounted behind the head unit. You have your main module, you have your main harnesses. This is our audio cable, and then you have an antenna for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. We will now take apart this stereo. First, we're gonna remove the bracket, and it's held on 
four Phillips bolts. So there's two on each side. So you're gonna go ahead and just remove them. And then you can take the screen and disconnect it from the bracket. Now we need to remove this back cover from the screen. In order to do that, there's uh, bolts all around the side. So there's two on top, two at the bottom, two on the side, on each side. And then there's four right at the back. And there's one under the sticker. You just have to peel the sticker and use your screwdriver and remove all these bolts. Now we'll grab this cover and gently pull it off. There's one connection here for the fan and you can use your hook tool in order to press on this clip in order to disconnect this connection. Now there's one more bolt right in the middle which you have to unscrew also. Now there's three connections so this one this one and this one this one you can just grab and disconnect these ones you need to use our tool here or your nail and unlock the lock and then you can disconnect it this one you have to lift up to unlock it and then you can disconnect it and then there's this small one Also, there's a lock and at this point you can grab the original circuit board and just lift it up and it comes apart so this is our circuit board which we're gonna install so first what you're gonna do is grab these flat cables this thick long one will go in here so when you're putting it in make sure that you don't insert it too far and these edges right here they line up as they line up and the cable is straight you can lock it in place. You will do the same for this one. You will take this cable, make sure that it goes past its locks. It has to line up with the two small little locks right here. And then you can lock it in place. We will now unlock this one and we'll feed the original wire here. We're going to connect it. Same thing, don't push it in too far. You have to line it up right here by these corners. Once it's lined up and it's fully straight, that's when you can lock it in place. We will take this connection here. This is where the original wire will go. Once it's all the way in, you can also lock it in place. Before securing the circuit board, we're going to take our wire which came with the kit and we're going to connect it over there so you'll grab this end when you're connecting it you got to make sure that these the side where you can see all the metal connections that's the way it goes in if you try to put it in like that it won't work there you go it's all the way in and at this point we can take our plastic rivets and secure this circuit board inside. So now we need to put this original circuit back and connect it to all the connections. And this connection right here, the small one, is pretty tricky to do. So what we suggest to do is to unscrew this one bolt on the side. This way you have better access and you can grab it. And this would be the first connection that you do back once it's all the way in and straight you can lock it in place and then you can do the rest of the connections same with this big one once it's in and lined up you can lock it in place now we can do this one so you the last one is this one and now you can secure everything with the original bolt here right in the middle and now you can put this side bracket back. We will take our back cover and we'll connect this connection for the vent here. And now you can carefully place the cover back. When you're putting this cover back, you gotta make sure that the cable goes on the side here and doesn't get squished by the bracket. 
so you kind of move it here and then you lock everything in place what you can do is just secure everything with one bolt at the back because before putting everything back you need to test it inside the car uh, the test will require you to connect these two top connections you're going to turn on your car and you're just going to test the touch functionality and just to make sure that everything works so this is the screen again this is not fully assembled we just have it inside the car to test we'll plug in these two white connections on top then we will turn the ignition on as you can see the image fully lights up so everything works correctly now you got to test the touch screen and the touch screen is working so it means everything inside was installed correctly and now you can fully assemble it back so we're gonna reinstall all the bolts on the back on the sides and then we're gonna reinstall the bracket back so now we're gonna reinstall the bracket and the top of the bracket is where it has these two felt things and then the bottom where the two bolts are and the top of the screen is right here so you have to make sure that these two things are close to the white connectors then you're installing the bracket correctly because you can install it upside down once it's positioned properly you can put the bolts back so everything has been assembled you only have this one extra wire coming out of the screen so we're going to take these harnesses and our module back to the car so we're back in the car now we're going to cover our shifter you can use some fiber microfiber cloth because we're gonna remove our head unit we showed you earlier how to disassemble all the bolts and there's a connection here it's right here this is for audio so once you unplug it you will take this cable that came with our kit on one end it has the auxiliary connection on the other end it has the exact same matching connection that you removed from the back of the stereo so we will plug our cable instead we will then plug in the original connection into our connection which gives you this auxiliary cable that's going to be our way to feed sound to the system so once that's done you're going to now take the rest of our harness so on this harness there's going to be two uh, Two of these connections so they look exactly like the original ones so these ones you have to put behind this plastic and they have to come out behind the screen so that's what we're gonna do right now then we'll right away take the original connections and plug them into our harness and these two will go into the back of the screen so now what else you have in our harness is this main plug which will go into our module so for now we will not do that but the other end there's also this usb cable and that usb cable we suggest to bring it out on the side right here this is only going to be used for wired connection for your wired apple carplay and wired android auto and also it's going to be used for updates if you need to update the module you would plug in your usb stick right here so a good place is right there so we will feed it right through the back you have to stick your hand in there it's hard to see it but trust me there is a big opening which lets you feed this cable through and you can just leave it tucked in like like so before we forget we also need to connect this this auxiliary connection so as you can see this is our harness and this is the connection on the back of the stereo so you just plug it in otherwise you're not going to have any sound this one's also marked auxiliary at this point you can kind of tuck in the wires at the back but you have to leave this cable right here Now we will take our screen and we have that extra wire which we installed and it also has to go behind this plastic and around our harness because we need to plug it into the back of our module. And then at this point you can pull the cable through and we're going to connect everything at the back of the screen. 
So there's the two white connections, but first it's easier to first connect all the antennas. And then when you plug in them back in, they have to match their colors. So brown goes into brown and etc. Now you can take all the wires behind the screen and tuck them in. So that way you can actually put the screen back. So you have to tilt it. Then it has to go here and go on these plastic clips right here. Same with our head unit. As you can see, it's sitting right on the plastic clips. Same on the bottom. Make sure you don't forget any wires. This wire is original from that light that we removed initially. So again, the head unit brackets are sitting on the plastic so everything is correct now we have our module here and we need to connect these wires into the module so this is the main harness this is the wire going to the screen and then the last thing is our wireless antenna and then the module will just be resting right here and then you can tuck the antenna right on the corner here and you can choose to mount it with a double-sided tape, but don't mount it to anything metal. You can mount it to something plastic, like right there. So before assembling everything back, we're just gonna do another test. So uh, we have plugged in our this top control panel, then we plugged in the radio control right below it. So with these two, we also turned on the ignition. And now we are going to open the center armrest. And we're gonna unplug our native SD card so it disables the original navigation so it doesn't interfere with our kit you're gonna see it's just gonna say loading map and at this point we will go to audio settings we will go to source and select the source as auxiliary that way we can hear stuff from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and what you're gonna do is press and hold this back button and we'll get you this mode which you didn't have before so as that's the back end of our kit. As you can see, there's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and then the settings if you want to pair your phone wirelessly. But for testing, we will just take our wire, we'll plug in our phone and test to make sure that everything works by the wire first. So CarPlay should launch. As you can see, it launched. So what you're going to test is the touch screen. You will make sure that the sound is working and it's working. And at this point, you can shut everything off and now we're going to assemble everything back so to assemble everything back we're first going to install these four bolts on top they are the silver ones that you removed as you can see there's the black ones and the silver the silver hold these metal brackets so four on top and then there's two bolts at the bottom and these black bolts hold the actual trim that and the control panels below the screen so we will take our silver bolts and we'll put them all back Now we can put the vents back. And then there's a bolt right here in the middle. We need to put back. So now we can take this panel. We need to plug it back in. Push it back in so it sits on its clips. And then there's two bolts underneath. There's one right here and one right behind this cable that you have to back next it's the silver radio control panel and again you just plug in the cable push it in so it sits on its clips and then again there are two bolts underneath now we can take this piece and just put it back in and then there's a wire underneath which goes into this black panel. And then you can, as you can see, these are the clips that it's held on. And you just need to push it towards the front of the car. And then it's, it's secured. And the last piece is this rubber piece. To push it all the way in. And make sure that it goes around the, the socket there.
So everything has been assembled and we paired our iPhone wirelessly to the system. You can also pair your Android phone wirelessly and you can control it both through this scroll knob right here or you can control it through the touch screen. And again, this was a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2017 Infinity QX60. I hope you liked the video and we'll see you next time.